everybody and welcome to Hannah's Happy Space. My name is Hannah and you're joining me here today at home. Um, I live uh, in the southwest of England. Yep, that's right. <laughs> that's a good start, isn't it? Um, down in Devon on the edge of Dartmoor. Um, I live at home with my older sister Cara and her son, Sebi, my nephew. He is nine, very nearly ten. Um, if you haven't been here before, thank you very much for joining me. And if you're a returning viewer, then welcome back. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I normally say at the beginning of a podcast. It's been um, maybe four weeks or so since I last podcast. There has been a video uploaded since, which was my craft room tour, my very unprofessional craft room tour. So thank you very much to those of you who watched um, and to those of you who commented. If you haven't seen that video, um, just have a look on, on my video list. I did a quick tour of my craft room. I'm looking that way because it's over there. Um, and it was uh, titled a very unprofessional <laughs> craft room tour because I have a new phone, which um, the camera is in a different place. So I was trying to get used to that. Hopefully it's okay today. Um, I was also using a little handheld tripod to try and keep things steadier and because the phone has a different camera on the back as well it kept getting my hand in so there's hands in the way um i also knocked over a pot full of pens during it um but yeah you've got to see most of uh all my crafting supplies and where i like to craft and i'm looking out there again because it's i'm just seeing if it's got any messier if anything it's probably about the same i have been doing more sewing which I'll talk about a bit later. Um, but let's have a quick life update. Not that there's a huge amount to let you know about. Um, today, I haven't said already, is Wednesday the 13th of September. Sebi has gone back to school. He's doing really well at school. I'm quite happy to go back. He's now in year five. Um, he's been doing his golf tournaments as usual. He's back to football practice, so everything's getting back to normal. He has also, we took him to the opticians the other day, and he's had to have new glasses, which he's very pleased with. So he's ticking along nicely. Um, what have we been up to? This, when you do a life update after about a month or so like this, this is when you realise your life is not very interesting. Um, obviously, there's been lots of crafting. Um, but um, if you watch any other... UK podcasters, you'll know we've had a little bit of a mini heat wave. So we haven't been doing a huge amount. Don't cope very well with the heat. It's better today. Still nice and bright and sunny, um, but a lot cooler. So we might be able to get out and about and do a bit more. Um, what? Don't think there's been anything. The usual knit club. Uh, we didn't have the normal. We didn't go to the cafe last week. Ruth came up here. Ruth loves to knit, got you in already. I know you were very disappointed you were not mentioned during the craft tour, but I felt it might be a bit odd just to randomly mention your name. Um, so yep, she came up here with me and Cara and we had a lovely chilled out morning, bit of little bit of knitting, mainly chatting. Um, yeah, can I think of anything else remotely interesting? I'm not sure I can. <laughs> that's sad isn't it but that's not what you're here for you're here to uh see my crafty goods that i keep thinking you might be able to see on camera but you can't there's a pile just here there isn't it's not a huge pile has to be said um i with the heat we've had i've struggled with yarn crafts so knitting and crochet have pretty much been out the window especially with acrylic yarns or wool yarns that might squeak or and I finished a big project as well so I was a bit you know when you finish a big project you're like yes I'm going to start another one and I did I cast on another jumper um and haven't touched it since so yeah the, but there is knitting there is crochet and there is also cross stitch hand sewing and uh free motion embroidery sewing so there are other things to show you. I think that's everything. Um, oh, I did mention at the end of my last little video, and I think I'm possibly mentioned it at the last at the end of the last podcast, that I'm making more bags for the shop. 
there has been a delay on my drawstrings being delivered so it's not going to be as soon as i thought hope it will definitely be this month fingers crossed as long as it all turns up um but what i might do is if they show if my drawstrings and everything show up sooner i'll do like a video like i did last time um just a separate shop update video and show you what's going in but i'll talk a bit more about that at the end as well okay i'm looking down if you don't know because um i say this every time but if you're new my um notes are underneath the camera um on the chair that underneath you don't need to know the whole setup, but that's if I'm looking down, that's why. Let's stop jabbering and get on, shall we? So let's start with the big finished object. We're starting with knitting. Obviously, it's too warm to put on. I will show you um, as much as I can now. It's a big item, um, but I will try and take a photo of me wearing it and put it in somewhere around here. So I had started this last podcast, um, I had a fair bit done I think, but I finished it not long after that, it's been finished for some time, obviously it's not for now, it's for when things get a lot chillier. This is the Antler Pullover from Tin Can Knits, it's a cable sweater, that's my little yarny stitch so you know which is the back um yeah so this is the cable now i have done cables before very basic cable didn't have a huge ex amount of experience so i thought i'd i love cables i love texture knitting i thought i really want to master it and i think i definitely did with this project now there is a mistake i'm just looking at the back there is a mistake it's on the back i got quite far past it before i realized um me and cara talked about it and like, it's on the, on your back <laughs> i'm not gonna see it if someone comes up behind me pokes me in the back and says there's a mistake in your jumper then um quite frankly they've got too close and shouldn't be poking me in the back um yeah so this is an all-in-one knit in the round sorry jumper but it's um bottom up so it's quite i've done it quite a long jumper full length sleeves so it's going to be a really nice warm winter jumper um and i did do it in this color which mum gave me after she'd had a bit of a clear out there we go um to go with a specific pair of trousers, a pair of Lucy and Yak trousers with sunflowers on. Um, so the yarn used, try and get the, there we go, um, is Signet DK, it's an acrylic yarn, not DK, sorry, Aaron, Signet Aaron, um, in the shade Honey. So that's that one. Just show you, I'm so happy with the cables. Oops, I cut them in my pocket. Yeah, really happy with those cables. Um, haven't blocked it. I know acrylic yarn doesn't block in the same way that wool yarn does. I don't think. I don't think I've ever blocked an an all acrylic garment. If you have any hints or ways that you do it, let me know down below because I'm not really sure. Is it just a case of soaking it like a wool jumper, pinning it out? I saw something on Instagram about using a hairdryer. I'm sure that's what I saw, but there wasn't a huge amount of information and I, you know, it was one of those flip past kind of things. Um, any information, any hints, tips, send them my way. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so that is, that's that one. Haven't got much else I can tell you about that. My <laughs> antler pullover. From tin can knits let me just fold that one up oh i think to be honest i could have got away with doing smaller sides i always do the similar same similar sort of size but this one is quite large and it's acrylic so it'll probably stretch won't it um so i probably could have got away with a smaller size but yeah you'd like to be on the safe side <laughs> right 
pop that down there. That is it for knitting finished objects. Um, and I only have one other finished object to show you, but I, I have an in-between section today of almost FOs. I'll, you'll see what I mean when I get to show you them, but oh no, I have two more finished objects, sorry. So let's do, <coughs> excuse me, let's do some sewing next. So if you've been here before, you might have heard me mention, I'm looking past the camera towards it, my mantelpiece. <laughs> Ruth will laugh at that because she says when I mention it, she imagines almighty, um, you know, great big mantelpiece. It's a normal mantelpiece. You'll have seen it. I've shown it on here before um, or on Instagram if you follow me over there. So at the moment, it's fairly summery, um, but I will be, we'll be changing that over to autumn. So we've been making some autumnal makes, uh, different, you know, different crafts to go up there. Now I have, I'll show you this one first. This is a little felt decoration. So it's about the same size as my hand. Now this is a bit of, um, uh, what's the best way to say? It's not, it's my own pattern because I couldn't find a pattern. Let's put it that way. So I was on Pinterest, like you do, and pinning and finding autumnal decorations. And I fancied doing some felt, something with felt. And there was a decoration similar to this, not the same, didn't have a pattern link. So I thought, well, I might be able to draw something like that and make some adjustments to make it how I want it to look. So that's basically what I did. Um, the picture that I saw was a toadstool house, completely different colours, completely different shape, um, but it did have some sort of autumnal bits to it. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll make my own pattern, which I did. I drew whoop, the toadstool shape um, and then made all the separate pattern pieces. So for the door, um, the sort of they call them gills on a mushroom don't they this piece here um little acorn leaves window now i suppose i could put a ribbon on this to hang it up but i think it's just going to stand on the mantelpiece so this is made from all from wool felt and then sewn together by hand with embroidery floss and decorated with embroidery floss as well um just all bits and bobs from stash so that's try and hold it steady that's that one a little toadstool house okay so that's another little finished project um then i have some machine sewing some free motion sewing now this is a smaller version. I've made two of these autumn garlands. Mine is already up on the mantelpiece. When it's all decorated, I will make a little video and show everyone. Um, so this is a smaller version that I made for mum. Mine's got the same icons on, just a couple of extras. So it's gonna be a bit tricky to show you. What I might do is just show you each individual thing and then see if I can hold it all up together. So these are all my own templates, all my own drawings. Um, then everything is fabric from Stash. So we've got, whoop, what's the best way to, we've got a leaf. So the, the, what I've done is I've used a patterned fabric for, the shape and that's been um, applied to some calico using heat and bond or you could use bond web um, and then sandwiched up with a layer of I don't think I used wadding on this one did I oh yeah this one is cotton wadding and then calico on the back and then free motioned over the top so we've got a leaf a pumpkin a tall toadstool. Yeah, this is when things get tricky. Get in a tangle. 
a tall pumpkin, an acorn, a short toadstool, and an oak leaf. So let's see what we can do here. I don't know if I'll be able to get it all on camera. Uh, there, so we've got all of those. But no, and I can't go any further back. Oh, I can just about get it in there. So that's um, autumn garland that I've made for mum. Like I say, mine's slightly larger. Now, this all the shapes are cut out and then have been attached to this um, hairy string, we call it here. But it, garden twine. Um, and I've attached them to the back with some circles of felt. Just hot glue gun those on. So yeah, that's one of my autumn garlands. Let's go off to mum. There we go. So that is my fi final finished object. <coughs> Sorry, it's itchy throat this morning, or dry throat, one of the two. Okay. So in between each section now is almost finished object. Um, where is it? Here it is. So these are things that are pretty much finished. They've just got one little bit left over. So we've got in here my um, Siobhan's Crafts bag. We have some socks. Now I don't have the rest of the yarn to show you from this because I've already passed it on mum's gonna have some um this is if i show you the yarn first oh there we go now this is a west yorkshire spinners um sock yarn signature four ply from their birds range it's some new ones that they've just not long released this is J. I've passed the rest on, like I say, to mum, and she's got a ball of this very similar to this blue, so she's going to use that up for the you know, contrast for the toes and heels and cuffs and things. Because I have size 8 feet, so I've used up quite a bit of the yarn, um, and she has size 6 feet, so we can, we can work it out between us. So, like I say, these are an almost finished item. There's two, two socks. But as you can see, still on DPNs at the bottom, waiting to be kitchen stitched. I suppose I could have put them on the blocker. Just one minute, I'll go and grab the blocker. Okay, blockers. You might be able to see the back. So these um, are my vanilla socks. Go to Vanilla Sock Recipe. Um, I use the basic sock pattern from Win It Mum. So, <clears throat> here we go, let the light get back to normal. Two by two cuff, two by two rib. Um, quite a long leg. I don't ever do the same leg, same length leg. Not, I don't have a set amount of rows. I knit until I think, yep, yeah, that's long enough for what I want this time. Um, and I just eyeball the second one, match it up, so it's the same. Um, oh, we've got a knit one, slip one, heel flap and gusset. Yeah, heel flap and gusset. Um, so there's your heel turn, then for the foot again. We don't have a set number. I either measure them up against a pair of socks I've already got or try them on. Then, now this is going to be a slightly trickier to show you because of the needles. Whoop, a wedge toe. So, yeah, they just need kitchenering up and the weather is cooling down. I'm trying to get it all in. There we go. Uh, the weather is cooling down now, so these will soon be on a foot. Um, yeah, I have got some more, I don't know where I put it, I did buy another ball of one of the new sock, um, bird sock yarns 
so I'll probably have some more to show you soon because now the weather's going a bit chillier. Obviously, I need loads of more socks for, for the winter. I haven't got enough. Um, yeah, so that is a very nearly finished whip or almost FO, whatever you want to call it. So they need kitchener up and that will be that will be that. Okay, put them away. Keep those blockers there because I've got other socks in a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Difficult. Okay, it's tickling my throat when I need to be chatting. Right. Um uh, another almost finished item. Well, there's four of them. No, there's well, I'll show you all four, but I can't remember if I've shown you one before. So I have been cross stitching um, again, ready to put up on the mantelpiece. I had uh, one, two, three, there's four little cross stitch cushions up up there at the moment, which I've shown you previously um, with all sort of summery theme. So obviously, they need changing to autumn. Now, this first one can't remember like I said I can't remember if I've shown you this one or not <clears throat> this is um this is uh, it's called the crow and acorn pattern I think it's called crow and acorn from Plum Street samplers now this cross stitch has been completed on a I think they just call it natural you can see it's got all different sort of picking it up. Mm. Oh, a bit there. So it's got different flex in amongst it. Um in, in the Ada. So 14 count Ada. And I have cross stitched this one using I'm not sure if it was the exact colours in the pattern or what or the closest I could get, maybe, but they are classic colour works so the hand dyed threads so you get a little bit of a variation in those then I have framed that with some uh, fabrics from my stash calico on the back and obviously there's a turning gap they need this all of these need stuffing and then sewing up so that's the first one which I may have already shown you so if I have I apologise but that's the first one that's been done for some time. So it's been waiting to be stuffed for a while. Then I've got three new ones. So the next one, loose thread, is this, this little acorn design. This is um, a pattern from Mama Witch cross stitch. Everything I've talked about or will talk about, there'll be a link in the description box below. Um, so this one has come from Etsy. I think, yeah, no, the Plum Street one was a printed pattern that I bought from Patchwork Rabbit. Um, everything else are Etsy downloads. So this one has been done on, ooh, there's, there's the camera. Uh, this one has been done on black 14 count Ada. And then the stitching has been done using a mixture of DMC and anchor threads and again not exact colours that are on the pattern. I do sometimes try and get a closest match as I can by using a um, thread converter so if the pattern you've you've bought is, is all listed in DMC threads you can go online and find a DMC to anchor converter or you can do the same for classic colour works. Um, they don't always have the exact match, but they have the closest to. Or, to be honest, I will look at the image on the pattern and just pick out colours that I think are close enough or work, work well. And then um, for this little cushion, I just sewed some strips together and then cut those into smaller strips. And that's got a calico back as well. So this one is smaller. So I'd say this one, I just thought I had a tape measure. I'd say this one is 
maybe seven inches square and this one about five inches square something like that um so that's those two the next one is a similar one to my summer ones if you watched that one um i did a design with a hair and strawberries growing around it this one is an autumnal hair with leaves and acorns now i've got ahead of myself here because i've just realized that i haven't fit that on the pattern if you see I'll just take a thread off the caps on the acorns on the pattern it had some um back stitching across it to make it textured i didn't it wasn't a choice i just didn't i just forgot to do it <laughs> um so again i didn't have the exact colors to match so these are a variety of dmcs and anchor threads from my stash and this one has been done on that natural ada 14 count this pattern is from wandling stitches again on etsy she has some lovely designs most of them feature this hair um, and then lots of different seasonal part bits around different types of flowers all that kind of thing um yeah and then just some this is batik fabric at the bottom and some rickrack as well for a little bit of detail so that one is probably three by eight inches something like that and the final one is this little pumpkin and this design is from ludicrous stitches again on etsy and again didn't use the exact threads um a variety of dmcs and anchors this one has been done on a 14 count white ada and then some fabrics this i know is a uh, lewis and irene bubbles fabric top and bottom and some solid orange cotton on the back so these all need to be stuffed let's say see if i can show you them all if i can mm -hmm. so yeah all need to be stuffed and turning gaps sewn Oh, that's not very good is it turning gap sewn up um and they will go on the mantelpiece let me change everything over so yeah that has been my these have been sort of my main craft while the the um the weather's been hot i haven't wanted things on me and i like i say yarn tends to squeak makes your hands sweaty that kind of thing cross stitch has been brilliant um so it's a small project off your lap um and obviously you're just holding onto your needle so you're not getting hot hands either a loose thread there um yeah so those are almost finished I'm gonna pop those away that's my almost finished section um so now we can go on to proper whips works in progresses uh let's start with knitting they're all in their bags and i can't remember which is in what so that's one of my own bags lewis and irene fabric these are some more basic socks i'll put on a blocker got needles on the end again i tend to um do the whole do the pair before i kitchener up the toes and then do those at the same time. Okay. So these, I love these. These have come up really nice. Some lovely stripy socks. So again, this is using the um, basic sock pattern from Winnick Mum same two by two cuff heel flap and gusset wedge toe waiting to be kitchenered so this yarn is james c brett funny feet 
and this is shade FZB17. Um, I have used this sock yarn before, but I didn't keep the socks. I did a pair of socks for who did I do them for? For Charlotte, my sister's, my sister's, my boy, my brother's girlfriend. Gosh, um, right. But it was really nice to knit with. So when I bought that, I bought an extra ball basically um, for myself, and obviously a lovely bright colours that I like. This is a so funny feet with bamboo so this is 50 percent superwash wool 25 percent polyamide and 25 percent bamboo 400 meters on 100 grams now they do this in lots of different colors this particular pattern where you get this striping effect so you get wide stripes oh yes the jog in the in the color wide stripes followed by narrow stripes so you can see on the toe here wide stripes in followed by narrow stripes um with white in between i think yeah i think alex from my yarny corner has shown these before i know she likes this yarn so that is one sock complete and i haven't cast on the second one yet because i've got distracted with a different sock um but there will be a a um another one for to make the pair to go with this sock let me take that off there so that is another pair of socks on the go and put everything together that's that one what is next more socks that are in my mandalorian bag from amelia x joy um now i only cast these on the other night so fair, fair amount fair way through now i've already mentioned her but this um pattern is from alex at my yarny corner and i am joining in with her make along that she is hosting with her friend sue from distant stitches podcast i think that's right i'll double check before i put the information down below and they are running the spooky feet mal which i will put the hashtag on the bottom i think it's on instagram facebook and ravelry um or you can email it into her and the criteria is halloween themed socks but the rules are very lax um if you can convince them that they're halloween socks then they are halloween socks so it might be the pattern that's halloween themed the colors that kind of thing so i thought join in the mail support alex's new pattern so i've bought the puffle sock pattern i'm just trying to work out which way to hold this up so you can see the the pattern so this there you go there's the pattern which is down just down the front of the foot at uh, leg sorry at the moment so i have done a two by two rib then followed alex's pattern for the puffle stitches and then alternating yarns as i go then on this particular pattern um alex is a huge fan of the shadow wrap heel i have never ventured beyond the heel flap and gusset that's what i learned that's what fits my foot that's what i was sticking with um but it is in the pattern and i've heard lots of people talk about how good good it is how easy it is to knit how well it fits so i thought I'll go for it. I will do as the pattern says, and then if I really don't get on with it, I can take it out and put in my heel flap and gusset, um, which I would normally do with any other sock pattern. If it said a different heel, I would just swap it out. Um, so the instructions for the shoe, the instructions, <laughs> the instructions for the shadow wrap heel 
are written out in Alex's pattern, but she also has a tutorial on her pod, on her YouTube channel. So again, all the details will be underneath. Now, that video was brilliant for me because I, as much as reading the instructions, once I knew how to do it, reading the instructions, yes, that all made sense, but I needed to be able to see exactly what to do because um, it was something completely new to me. And the video is really clear. <laughs> and I did, she, she does... Um, so on the first bit, you have to make certain types of stitches. And so she does a couple of those with you and then says, right, you carry on um, and, you know, come back when you're to the same stage. <laughs> she said that and I'd done that and I thought, oh, no. rewind, watch that bit again. Right, I've done it this time. I know how to do it, but just to make sure, I'm going to rewind and watch that bit again. So Alex was on repeat quite a lot, but that was, you know, the benefit of YouTube. And so um, I shared this on her Facebook page and people seem to think I've done it right. <laughs> this is my shadow wrap heel. And it was really easy to knit and a lot quicker than... Um, the heel flap and gusset that I normally use. Um, obviously I haven't tried it on yet. Hopefully it'll fit okay. Because if it if it does, then I'll definitely be using it a lot more. And I know it's really good for self-striping yarns. Um, or you know, if you're striping socks like this, because it, it keeps the keeps the pattern going. I think it's okay. I'm trying to show you. Looks fairly neat. Let me, I know it's the wrong way up that it would be on your foot, but it will just keep my stitch mark out of the way. Does that look okay? Can't see any holes. Um, yeah, so I have finished the heel and now going on to the foot. As you can see, I am knitting them on nine inch mini circulars. The pattern is written for um a magic loop but if you you know if you knit socks in a different way it'll it will work now i don't think i ever have said on here before because i know we've got people say oh i knit my socks on this size and i knit the, this sock this is the medium size which is a 64 stitch cast on for my normal socks i always do a, a 60 stitch cast on but very often if they're a pattern sock, I do go up to 64. Um, and it might seem a little odd because I see people say, oh, I do my um, I knit socks on 2.5, 2.75. When I learned to knit socks, I had only ever knit a scarf and a hat on chunky yarn. <laughs> um, and then a friend at Knit Club said, right, I'm going to teach you how to knit socks. So I did. And I was an incredibly tight knitter then. Things have um, got better. I'm a looser knitter now, sort of a, a normal tension, if you like. However, my tension has stayed the same when knitting socks. So because I was such a tight sock knitter and it was the stitches were so tight and it was difficult to knit, I ended up using, for four-ply yarn, um, three millimetre needles, which seems massive. When people say I use 2.5, I think, oh, gosh. But my tension has always stayed the same when knitting socks. I know you get a different tension when knitting in the round. Um, and maybe because they are little, you are a little bit tighter with your tension. It's always worked for me. Um, you can see my stitches aren't too, too gappy, too loose. So, yeah. I knit on 3mm 9-inch circulars, usually... I like to use the higher, 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 higher bamboos. I do have a pair of higher, higher steels, not the sharps, because they are exactly what they say, sharp, and um, make holes in your fingers. <laughs> um, so yes, that is what, just to let you know, that's what I did do my socks on, even. Um, I also knit the... Um, Shadow Wrap Peel using the 9 inch circulars. 
when I do a heel flap and gusset, I move over to deep ends. Um, so leave the top, what would be the top of your foot stitches on the circular and then work back and forth on more needles and then, you know, pick up. Keeping it all on one needle was loads easier. Um, there weren't bits sticking out all over the place. Not that it's a problem. I'm so used to doing that heel that it doesn't cause me too much problem now. But yes, if you haven't tried the Shadow Rep Peel, definitely give it a go and definitely go over to Alex at My Yarny Corner for her tutorial. The yarn I'm using. Um, Halloween Spooky Colours. I have gone for orange and purple. They look just about right there. When I've put photos on... Um, Oh, where have I put them? On Alex's Facebook group. Um, they've come up really bright, but I think because I've been knitting them in the evenings and they're under the artificial light, it looked a lot brighter. But yeah, that's that's the colours. So this orange, lots of different shades in there, and this purple, which has got some bluer bits through these are my own hand dyed i think they were yeah they were both old skeins that i dyed a long time ago and over dyed them so you've got lots of different colors that come up from the colors that are underneath if i show you a little bit peeking there we go you can see especially in the purple there's lots of different shades in there so I'm really enjoying the pattern as well. I like like a textured sock. Um, yeah, so they are the Puffle Socks. Highly recommend. And I shall be getting on with those later. So they can go away. That's that one. Okie doke. Let me just look. So that is it for knitting. I've got some crochet. So again, we are following the Halloween autumnal theme. I've said theme already, but yeah, that's <laughs> where we're going with this. This is in my crochet and things bag, which was, I think, is she the happy bright company now? She used to be Lana Boo. This, it was a birthday present. Anyway. So let me take out the bits that I need to show you. Um, that bit and that bit. So in here I have a selection of um, Shepier's, Shepier's Katona four ply cotton, which is this one. just I've got loads of balls and stash I don't know what colors I've used I don't even know which where this band's come from <laughs> um but yeah all different colors from in stash to make this pattern now you may have seen this before if you follow um lovely Jeanette over at Crafty Clegg's Creations hope you're feeling better Jeanette um if you're watching <laughs> um yeah, she's made one of these and that's where I saw the pattern and knew I had to make one. Now you may notice when I show you, mine is slightly smaller. This is the Acorn House door stopper. I'll put a picture in so you know where we're aiming. Now I've got... Lots of bits. Now in the pattern, the pattern calls for worsted weight yarn, I think. So, you know, more like an Aran or a double knit over here. Um, I wanted to make a smaller version and have gone for four ply. Now, I've done, I've used four ply yarn on a 2.5 millimetre hook. Um, so, it, obviously, with if you're not a crocheter, when you crochet amigurumi, if you want a different sized object than in the pattern um you generally change the yarn the weight of your yarn and match your hook so this pattern was an aran weight yarn 
can't quite remember what size hook. But I decided I want a smaller one, so I'll do four ply with a corresponding hook. If you want it bigger, you go, say, chunky and your corresponding hook. What I didn't read properly in the pattern was that the most, I don't know if it's all of the little bits that go on, were done in a lighter weight yarn on a smaller hook. And I've just done them all same yarn weight, same hook. So I have had to make a few alterations to make things fit size wise. So let me show you the acorn. So this is the main piece. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit smaller. If I put it next to my hand, I think Jeanette's is probably my hand size. Um, so yeah, there's the little acorn. Then I've got all the little bits. Um, and these are the bits that I had to change. So I did, went down to a two mil hook um, for these smaller bits. After I made one piece and thought that's enormous. So go down to a smaller size hook. So like the little door here, so that will go on here. If I, if when I followed the pattern as is, it was, you know, quite a lot larger. So all I did was take a few rounds off, nothing too complicated. So there's a little, little door. Then we have a little window. Same again. Um, same again in the fact that I just used the two mil hook and then did a few did a couple less rounds. So we've got a little window. Let's show you. There you go, little window there. And then over the top of the door will be this um, oak leaf. Now this one did take a bit of um, fiddling with bit of working out because you couldn't just do around less so I did have to try and do a little bit of maths and work out how many chains and how many different stitches I needed but it wasn't too bad um, to figure that one out so that will go over the top of the door then we've got a little uh, chimney go up there and finally, two, oh, two dinky toasties. Um, I think I did alter these a little bit just with their, maybe decreased a little bit sooner than it said on the pattern. Um, again, in the cotton with the, four, with the two mil hook. So all of those bits need uh, fixing together. They are, all these bits will be hot glue gunned on. Um, and then that will be another little finished item to go up on the autumn display. I'm trying to, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this. I'm trying to put all the bits on there and hold it on. It's not happening. Um, but I'll have put the photo in so you'll know where we're aiming and I will show you when it's finished. So that's that's almost done. And that could have gone in the almost FO. Mm. It's a little bit further off being finished than those. So that's that one. Um, we have another crochet project. Oh, that's attached to a ball of yarn. So another, um, this is more of a Halloween-y item. Let me get all the bits of pieces out of the way. Um, this is a free pattern from Sarah D Crochet. Yeah, that's right. I follow if you, if you uh, bleh, I follow her on Instagram, but my mum sent me a link. Said you need one of these for the your mantelpiece. Um, so I'm doing one. <laughs> this is being crocheted in a selection of. Oh, hello. What's the end of that? In a selection of double knit acrylic yarns from Stash. So we've got white, purple and light grey. And the main colour I'm using is this sort of charcoal -y. And I am making Heckle the Crow. I will put a photo in now so you know what we're going for. Uh, 
and we have this bit still attached so I'm still working on the body this is the head and then you can see the back starting to come out here there's his little face then we've got a beak um so that's those two bits i have also got two little oh, two little feet little one is slightly larger than the other i think my tension must have relaxed a bit when i was doing it um yep yeah, two little feet two wings They've got these little feathery ends. That's two wings and one hat, which I think might be a little large. I don't know, I won't know into this stuff. If it is, I'll just pull back a little bit to one of the deep one of the increased rounds and just take one row out. So that's his little witchy hat. So a little bit more to do on that one. Finish the body up. Um, just trying to think. Yeah, finish the body stuff, and then it'll all be ready to go together. I think that's all the bits. Oh no, there's um, some tail feathers to do. So that's that one. So that's Heckle the Crow from Sarah D Crochet, and is a free pattern on her website. I will link it all below. Um, one where's where is it oh it's down there one more project to show you now i have shown you this before oh, what's that oh that's an, that's a piece of crochet that i don't need anymore because i did it in the wrong color um anyway i've shown you this project before this is a um another cow that i was taking part in the cow has now finished the last part has been released but it's like i said been far too hot and this is a big project sorry i'm just picking a bit of fluff off um far too big project to be doing now it's cooled down i'll be able to catch up so this <coughs> excuse me is my maxine afghan which is a crochet along um i am on the last row i've got to do one more row of part five this is a eight part cow um yeah so like i say finish that bit and then i've got the i've downloaded the following parts um there's no there's no rush um it will be done in time for the cooler weather it's been piled up on the floor and it's got all bits of fluff on it now should put it away in the bag um, yeah, so this is a pattern by KMW Crochet Designs. It was a free pattern. I'm not sure how long it's a free pattern for. I know once the cow's finished, um, sometime after that it's becoming a paid for pattern. So you'll have to check. I'll put the link in and you can go and check and see if you want to do it, if it's still a free pattern. Um, yeah, this was a project that I decided to take part in because I fancied a bit of a, a bit of a change I love crochet blankets um but I like I'd like I like I wanted a challenge piece really um not that there's been any stitches that I couldn't do there's been some new combinations of stitches that but you know it's different every single round so you you're always interested um and obviously the colour changes a lot. I am using good old Stylecraft Special DK that I have here. Um, there were colour packs that you could get for this or colour um, recommendations that you could use for this. 
I've used my own colours. So let's see if I can show you. I did show you last time, but I'll just quickly run through what we've got. We have got is it in there? Um, candy floss, which is the pink, apricot, lemon, spring green, sherbet, wisteria and clementa. Memo there. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is lovely. I'm really, I was really enjoying it. Um, there was no way I could have done it. Um, I swear it. <laughs> no way I could have done it during that heat. And it, it is, it's big. We're only on, um, like I said, this is only part five, it goes up to part eight. And um i was just trying to work out maybe how big it was mm, maybe about 25 inches something like that 25 inches square so it's going to be a whopper it might be bed sized i'd imagine it might fit upstairs on the bed who knows i know i'm running out of i had been taking pictures of it on the desk out there or on the floor out in the craft room and I'm running out of space to, to take photos of it now. So I will crack on with that. And hopefully, maybe when I see you next time, I don't know if it'll be finished. There's still quite a lot to go, but who knows? That's the Maxine Afghan. So that is everything, whether they be finished or almost finished. Um, I have quickly going to show oh, I have quickly that doesn't make sense I am quickly going to show you a little bit oh sorry I've been sat on my leg and it's gone to sleep <laughs> some bags that I've been working on don't worry I'm not going to go through all of them because there's quite a few um like I say I'm waiting on um drawstrings to come so they are not finished yet when the drawstrings come we shall do that um i am going to do like I say a separate video show you all of them so those of you who are interested can watch them and those who aren't bothered that's fine um i am going to be doing international posts this time i've still got to check all the details but yes i will be shipping other other places other than the uk um I think that's all i need to tell you about that for now anyway i'm gonna have so we've got a couple of these autumn bags which i've done some free motion on so they're my sort of standard sock size or standard small size um which are about eight by ten inches then i've got some more standard size small bags which um with the handles this time so just some different fabrics but more autumnal the last of summer that kind of thing then i went off piste and thought i've got an awful lot of fabric some of it's been stashed for some time i'm going to use up what i've got so these are all sort of one-off bags that are random in their size it's basically what i could get out of the piece of fabric so when they're complete and i show you them or when they're listed they'll have all the information about their sizings on so you've got they're all definitely bigger than that small size i've just showed you so just to give you an idea of some of the fabrics i've used um hold on let's drop them um, they're all very different and all different sizes none of them they're all lined but none of them um have wadding in this time they're all floppy bags um and then i've got a couple of these ones which are a heavier weight fabric again different sizes because i'm just trying to use up stash um this these are heavier weight um, they're not canvas, but they're a canvas like heavier weight cotton. So just some different um, 
bad for some of it poor needle poured on the top so again not wadded but lined and when they are finished i'll show you them in a bit more detail okay just pile those all up again make sure i know where they all are she says losing them anyway that is everything from me today yeah definitely is <laughs> um hopefully you've enjoyed watching um again thank you for joining me um if you're new returning everyone is very welcome uh if you'd like to leave me any comments brilliant i will uh, respond when i can uh if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you want to um if you're not already subscribed and you would like to that would be excellent as well i'm slowly creeping up um in numbers uh, all, i'd say someone said oh you're nearly at a thousand the other day and i thought oh yeah not quite um <laughs> 800 plus which is still staggers me that there's that many people who are remotely interested in what i've got to say when there are you know there are lots of other podcasts out there so thank you very much for joining me um you can follow me on instagram as well hannah's happy space um if you're interested if you're on instagram um and my shop is on Kofi. um if you're not interested in bags but you want to support me you can buy me a coffee over on Kofi. no pressure just thought i'd let you know links are below um and that is everything i am going to go and make myself a cup of tea now because i've chatted far too long and the throat's gone dry um cara is out for most of the day sebi is at school so i'm going to find one of my many projects probably my puffle socks put something good on the tv and do a bit of that for you know hanging out washing and that kind of stuff <laughs> right thank you again for joining me i will leave you now after all that waffling um enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you all again soon bye everyone Bye.